and welcome back to ADHD STEM. Today we're going to be watching the video about amorousia. So, without further ado, let's hop to it. Nope, that is not what I meant to do. Americium is really a very radioactive element, so it is handled in this glove box, and I'm not qualified to use such equipment, so Mark, who works here, will tell us about it. So this is a, this is a vial of americium-241, which is one of the isotopes of americium, and this was separated from some plutonium because one of the isotopes of plutonium, plutonium-241, decays into americium-241. Okay, so after we got past uranium, I feel like all of the elements all are things that come out of things that come out of nuclear reactors. Like we've just gone from uranium turns into like plutonium and then plutonium turns into americium. It's kind of a lot. But I guess that when you get radioactive elements they just decay into other radioactive elements. It's kind of weird half-life of 14 years. It turns out you can make americium a, a number of ways. It's generated when nuclear weapons are detonated. It's also found uh, in spent nuclear waste from nuclear reactors. So for example, uh, if you took a ton of material that had been used in a nuclear reactor and took it to one side, there'd be about 100 grams in that ton would be americium. This is actually ultraviolet visible spectroscopy cell and it goes into this holder which has two fiber optic connections to it and what happens is we pass light from the spectrometer through these fiber optic cables through the solution and out the other side and the spectrometer provides a fingerprint of what element is in that solution and that fingerprint is very specific to americium Americium is the only transuranium element that you're likely to have a sample of in your house. In fact, you may have several samples because americium is used in very small quantities, nanograms, one thousandth of a millionth of a gram in smoke detectors that we all have in our houses to prevent. One thousandth of a millionth? of a gram. I think that's right. Um, one thousandth of a millionth of a gram. In your house. In fact, you may have several samples because americium is used in very small quantities, nanograms. One thousandth of a millionth of a gram. Yeah. A thousandth of a millionth of a gram of americium is in your fire, fire detector in your house. It's kind of shocking that it would even do anything because it's such an itty bitty tiny amount. But I guess it's necessary because it's in all fire exting or not extinguishers, fire detectors. In smoke detectors that we all have in our houses to prevent us being burnt to death if there's a fire. <laughs> They were meant to put it off. Hi. You forgot to switch it off. I've actually uh, got uh, Martin Polyakov's uh, old smoke detector. You haven't taken a working yeah. one from his house? We haven't taken the working one, no, that wouldn't be safe. But we took one that stopped working. This is the inside of the smoke detector. And you can see here, it actually says americium. Well, americium oh. is a strong emitter of gamma rays and alpha particles and these are used in a smoke detector because if you get particles of smoke there's all stuff that makes smoke look white um, they intercept the radiation and stop the radiation getting from the radioactive source to the detector in your smoke detector so in fact what's measuring 
is a drop in the current going between the source and the detector and the alarm goes off. And it says that there's not... Okay, I have one question. How do they stop the americium from decaying? I think they said it has like a half-life of like 30 years. But then if you have an even smaller amount, which a thousandth of a millionth of a gram, it's a very small amount, how do they stop it from decaying? I guess that's why you have to have fire detect or smoke detectors replaced. But still, the window of time that you have to replace it seems like kind of large for how long it lasts. But I guess, a co I don't know. Just make sure your smoke detectors are working. I mean, don't set them off purposefully, but like test them. I There's like a button I think you can press. 0.9 micro curies. Now I don't know about you, but I don't normally remember what 0.9 micro curies really means. It means there's 0.26 micrograms and you might sit there and think what on earth does he mean by that? Well if you think of a grain of rice it weighs a hundred thousand times less than the grain of rice. It's got quite a history to it as well. It was first discovered in 1944 but this was kept secret for a whole year until it was eventually allowed out into the public domain. And the reason it was kept secret is because it was part of the Manhattan Project when there was all the research to generate nuclear weapons. So people didn't want competitor groups to understand how far ahead they were compared to the competition. So they kept the discovery of an entire element in the periodic table secret for a whole year. Uh, but then it was leaked out uh, and then the, basically they had to tell everybody. In nuclear fuel reprocessing, that the objective is to produce a pure uranium and a pure plutonium product stream. Now here at Sellafield, those materials are put into storage. And over time, one of the isotopes of plutonium, plutonium-241, decays into an isotope of americium, americium-241. And so over time, americium grows into these plutonium stocks. So it's possible to separate the americium from the plutonium by chemical methods. When it was first prepared, it was prepared because people predicted that these elements ought to be uh, synthesizable. It's just they didn't exist naturally. So of course this was a challenge to chemists. There's a little bit of an interesting story uh, behind the, the synthesis of these elements because they were quite arduous, quite long-winded. A piece of plutonium was coated onto some platinum foil, oxidised to plutonium dioxide, put in a cyclotron. Once this was over with, they would take this foil and they would dissolve what they wanted away with concentrated nitric acid. And then they had to precipitate what they wanted as a hydroxide using an ammonium reagent and dissolved it in mechloric acid. Some curium was removed. You then had the americium. And the people who did this process found it so tedious and so arduous that they actually re referred to it as pandemonium, which is Greek for uh, all demons or hell. What is interesting is that americium is an element which may become more useful in the future. It may be able to replace plutonium in batteries for spacecraft and so on. So currently plutonium-238 is used, but to be able to generate that within Europe would require very expensive in infrastructure to be put into place, including a source of neptunium-237 generation, building a reactor specifically for converting neptunium into plutonium-238, and it all becomes very expensive. The production of Plut-238 stopped in the US uh, a number of decades ago and they haven't uh, resumed production to this date. So stocks are running low. The European Space Agency would like to have an independent supply of these power sources. So they've commissioned a program of work to look at an alternative to Plutonium-238. And it's possible that Americium-241 could fulfil this role. Americium-241 doesn't produce the same amount of power, but it could be used in smaller applications. I 
don't like the names of elements that are named after countries because I feel chemistry is an international subject. Though I suppose that americium, although it's clearly derived from America, doesn't sound terribly like America, and therefore it's not bad as a name. And once something's got a name, it's difficult to change it, and everybody calls it americium, so we're stuck with it. Like that. And well, that was americium, and I liked that video. That was a fun video. But I still want to know how the americium in my s s smoke detectors is not gone yet. I don't know. Well, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Make sure you tell me what your favorite part of this video was, or your favorite fact about americium, in the comments below. I'll see you next time. Bye!